Hi, this is Levi. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to take a quick minute to introduce a few of the other podcasts in the WCF Podcast Network. Tom and Naomi are exploring how we interact in our ecclesial relationships in From the Platform. It's a very in-depth series that is incredibly helpful for understanding and developing compassion and better listening practices. That's from the platform. Sam Taylor from Cleveland, Ohio, produces weekly devotionals in Pause to Consider. Think uh, Mr. Rogers meets uh, Fireside Chat. I love Sam's humble style and think every episode is fantastic. You can find both of those wherever you get your podcasts or on our website at wcfoundation.org. Now, here's the show. The following episode contains themes of mental health which some listeners may find difficult. If you're feeling vulnerable right now, feel free to listen in later when you're feeling ready. Welcome back to Little Faith. Uh, Today I'm here with Michael Ash from Route 66. Hi Michael, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing grand. So tell us, for everyone, anyone who hasn't met you before, um, tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm Michael. That one's uh, self-explanatory. I'm from the UK, and I'm actually a structural engineer. Well, studying structural engineering in Wales, in Cardiff. Uh, I'm actually from Bournemouth, though, sunny Bournemouth. Um, but which, yeah, which I, is by the sea. For it is by the sea. <laughs> South coast, wonderful place. Uh, but I haven't been there in a while though so I'm uh, kind of missing it I'm missing the sea I really miss the sea I know Cardiff's sort of by the sea but yeah I uh, make music I produce podcasts funnily enough uh, and yeah just a bit of video editing along alongside that hoping hoping eventually to get along there so yeah you bringing my creative side to Christianity is what I try and do yeah that's fantastic and you have started a movement called Route 66 so tell us a little bit little about what Route 66 is and how long have you been going? Oh, yeah, Route 66. Um, I started it, I think it must have been about three years ago, about three and a half years ago in the summer of 2017. So I took a trip of trust to Marseille. Uh, I went uh, with a bunch of friends and we didn't know where we were going. We basically signed up to this event where they would send us an envelope with a destination in. We just had to get to an airport. And they popped us on a plane and we went to Marseille for a weekend. Yeah, we didn't know until 4 a.m. that we were going to Marseille. Uh, No supplies, just sat around. And while I was there, we walked to the top of this big hill in the blistering heat of 2017's heat wave. So it was about 50 degrees at the top of this hill. Uh, And right there, I sort of felt this awesome sort of presence really hot really sweaty uh and i just sat down uh and looking out over the mediterranean i penned what was the first route 66 song so it was up there it was called live in you and it's actually out now as as a on an ep and a single but yeah route 66 started at uh, on top of that hill in marseille and it started actually as an idea of a collaborative movement i wanted it to be lots of people writing songs uh for the christelphian community to sort of you know bring contemporary music in i we have our green book we have our ptls and they're great but there's also a whole sort of genre that we haven't touched on and that's well contemporary music and a lot of young people particularly still well they really enjoy contemporary music and i thought that would be a really useful tool to get people talking about issues and talking about uh, emotions and talking about God and Jesus in a sort of really interesting way and trying to use music to bring that along. So now it's changed a little bit. It's not so collaborative, uh, but it's still very much a tool that I like to use uh, to get my own thoughts down about my faith. And it's now turned into what I'd like to call a a project that is music for mental health. So it's been transformed through over the years uh, and now we're writing music that sort of captures the human experience with our lives and it's it's honest. Um, So the, the crux of it now is that it's honest music for mental health 
uh, and it's just a vessel for us to talk about faith in a different way to really get emotions out and to help people feel it because music is so powerful and it's really very emotive stuff so it, it can connect with people on a different way to speaking from a platform and it's something that I don't feel we're using enough and I'd like to try and use it a bit more. Yeah, I, I love that idea. And I, I definitely feel like music is kind of multi-level as well. Like the music definitely touches on many of them as more of an experience and a personal expression. I love what you were saying about honesty because I think, you know, this, there has been a lot of stigma about mental health in the past and there still is to some extent, um, yeah. which is why we need to talk about it even today. But honesty is so important, like being able to be honest with ourselves and honest with each other. And music's such a great way to um, be genuine. Yeah, totally. And it's, a, it's really important that we are honest because by being honest, you're not just telling the truth, but you're being true to yourself. And it's it's those conversations, you know, on a, a Sunday morning, someone comes up to you at the meeting and goes oh are you all right and you go yeah I'm absolutely fine and inside you're going you know what it took me three hours to get out of bed this morning but I can't I can't say that because they're gonna then ask questions and and all this it's the honesty is going you know what I've had a really rubbish morning and and being able to have that conversation and be open with someone so it's yeah it's there's lots of things in inside that mm. Yeah, and I think we can be scared of being honest because we feel we could be judged or misunderstood. And I think at times there's something so public about a Sunday morning that it doesn't feel like it's a safe space to have maybe one-to-one -one conversations that are deeper or more private or more honest. Um, mm. But there's definitely so much scope for us to develop an environment and a culture where that space is safer whether it's like in your house or in a coffee shop or driving with someone in the car. Some examples like of where you can have richer conversation and be more open about how you're doing. It's not just this kind of stiff upper lip of Britishness, is it? <laughs> I mean, you know, we're both British. Like I think it's, it's something perhaps we all have a, a problem with as humans that we are scared of sharing parts of ourselves that even we're uncomfortable with. Yeah, it's a vulnerability that when you open yourself up, you know, that's it's when you're feeling your weakest. You you want to be strong all the time. But as soon as you say, you look, there's something wrong. You know, it feels like that's just a key for someone to come in and, and attack. Um, but really what it is, is just it's an opportunity for people to see see the problem that you're going through and help. Uh, and so I think that music's a really it, it really is tied to that, interestingly um because you know you could have a conversation with someone you could be there on a sunday morning trying to say these things and not really be able to express it all that well you might say the wrong thing you're not sure what to do on both parties both sides of the conversation but you could go sit in your car and you could put on you know a really happy song and you could feel all that or you could put on what people would call a sad song for me maybe it's an emo tune that's what i quite like uh and i put it on and i could belt out the lyrics and get all this i could feel all this like this raw energy this emotion just coursing through me and i'm like why couldn't i do that in there why couldn't i do that in the conversation um so i find that music's a really good way of just getting in tune with my own feelings even though they're not feelings that i wrote down somebody else wrote them thousands of miles away but I can still feel that same emotion and it sort of helps to put pins in a map or, or labels on your emotions as to what you're feeling. I think it's a really powerful way of getting those feelings across. Mm. So with Route 66, you, you've been developing a sense of community through the music. Yeah. Um, dialogue. How, have you had meant much feedback from people about your music and people sharing themselves? Yes, actually, there's been an amazing response. The overall, the, the first EP went down really well. It was really well received. Uh, it was called We Are Followers. And it was it was quite, it wasn't so deep, but there was still, there was still sort of this connection to the mental health. It was a little bit before the, the real time where I sort of started going in, in deep on it. But yeah, it's, it begins to sort of pen the journey uh, my journey through through spiritual life, through physical life, and 
uh, and to start thinking about it. And through that, through sharing my experiences, I've had other people coming forward and going, oh yeah, I feel that too. Or, oh, so that's what I've been feeling. And we've started having conversations and some people have messaged saying, oh, can we talk about this? Like, I'm, I'm feeling kind of low. I want to I wanna talk about this. Or I, I don't really know what I'm doing with my faith. Can we have a chat? And so, yeah, we've we've had chats. I've had phone calls with people out of it. Uh, and it seems to have helped them. We might not have answers, but we certainly is. We've had conversations about things, which is, in my mind, the biggest success to actually have people talking about their spiritual life or their their um, their mental health or just things that are going on that are troubling them. And to to have that come out of writing music and putting the odd social media post out there is is really quite incredible. Yeah, I I really enjoyed your um your video that you posted I think in June or July time um about why we need to talk about mental health and why we need to talk about it in our churches and ecclesias mm. and I think the big takeaway that I had from it is that we need to listen and like how important listening is to each other. Yeah, listening is the backbone of anything mental health based and that's not listening to get your point in next it's not waiting for the other person to finish it's hearing what they're saying taking it in understanding that that is what they're experiencing that that is their life viewpoint and then responding actively responding going okay so you've told me that this is how i feel about the situation or this is what i think you should do and that that comes from really internalizing what you've heard and what you've listened to so yeah totally listening is the backbone of anything in, in, in life I would go as far as saying and validating people's feelings and thoughts as well um yeah I think as part of the problem why people don't feel they can share is that they don't feel validated and valued by what's going on in their head and heart um mm. and acknowledging that our experiences are different but also I think what you were saying about this sense of community and response is that people have felt they're not alone. So by like listening to your music and and opening up more conversations about mental health, there is that sense of community realizing I'm experiencing the same kind of feeling as you are, and that's okay. And that's incredibly reassuring <laughs> that you know you're both not okay or you're both yes. struggling. And giving yeah. each other permission to have those feelings. I think one of the biggest challenges that our community has faced is that, you know, in general society, over the last 10 years, the slogan has sort of been, let's talk about mental health. Let's, we need to get people talking about mental health. And that was what the crux of my video back in June was about. But actually, that's moved on now people have, are talking about mental health that's not the issue anymore it's not about talking it's about listening mm. but in our community it seems that we're only just getting to the talking phase we're only just getting to the bit where we can say yeah you know what mental health is real and we can talk about it that's we're, we're behind the mental health drive right now we we need to do more and we need to listen more so one of the things that has been that's come up a lot in my conversations with people is that they feel judged mm -hmm. and that's a massive fear is that people are going to open themselves up and either be laughed at ridiculed or just told to not worry about it um and really what they're what someone's opening up to you what they want is you to go yeah you know you are feeling that that's that's what you're going through right now I might not understand, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you in however I can, whether that's just listening or whether that's, you know, maybe you have something that I can, that you know I can do to help you. It's really about accepting, acknowledging, and yeah, as you say, validating what this person is feeling. So there's, there's a lot of work to do, but it is being done. Yeah, I suppose that culture of judgment like you know can span many many things and mm. perhaps it comes from 
that feeling that some things are wrong and some things are right and we've got to categorize <laughs> everything in the way that we interpret scripture and that we you know live our live our lives serving god and serving the lord jesus but of course we realize that things aren't set in stone in that way yeah the christian life is challenging and it's about change and it's about a continual growing relationship with god and jesus and each other it's not stagnant i guess it's also about kind of living with uncertainty yeah mm. so um living with doubt and that really i think connects with mental health as well and spiritual health um you know we, we can't separate the two i think they're very you know we are spiritual beings as humans and yeah we have to, yeah we definitely have to be kind with ourselves and each other in that there is you know there there is a lot of doubt in our lives but that's part of that's part of our faith it's part of our relationships with each other absolutely i think it's totally important to realize that anyone out there who's listening to this and is doubting their faith at the minute doubting is faith that's something that i've come to really understand you can't have one without the other you can't have faith and not doubt you you might feel certain in your beliefs but you're never not gonna have doubt in some respects so the most studied person they might believe with all their heart but there is still an element of doubt whether they realize it or not that is the cornerstone of their belief the belief is is formed from that so if there are for people who are doubting faith i think it's really important to know that you really aren't alone because everybody doubts they just might not know it mm -hmm. and at the end of the day we're all human we can study scripture as much as we want but we're all different we all take things in differently we all read things differently we interpret things differently and that's kind of special i think i think that's one of the wonders of creation that we are all so different and that does play into the the mental health game you know when people are talking about mental health or listening to someone talking about mental health it's really important that they acknowledge that the person they're talking to is a human the that they've made mistakes that they're going to keep making mistakes but that their mental health problems are not a mistake that's just all part of being a human because we all have mental health we might not all have poor mental health at this exact same moment but we all have a mental health the same we have a physical health and it fluctuates so mm -hmm. it's really important to understand that the, this this human that we might be talking to is struggling right now in the same way we might struggle with tonsillitis they're struggling with their brain uh, and so that's they're not going to be a robot they're not going to understand scripture exactly the same as you uh, it's yeah it's just the human experience and that's something that I think is really important to Route 66 in that it's it's not trying to be something we're not. It's about being human. It's about living life as best and as, as in as holy a way as possible. But that, you know, we're not going to get it right all the time. And yeah, it comes with difficulties. Yeah, definitely. And with your faith journey, are there times that you can reflect on that mental health challenges were more obvious to you like that where things in your life were really like resonating absolutely absolutely there's been a lot of times when it might have been doubt it might have just been personal situations but that really rocked my faith and mental health i think when i have a poor bout of mental health that's when i find it the biggest challenge mm -hmm. i find it really really difficult to believe sometimes just because you know it's so overwhelming and that you know the world it really does get too much sometimes and yeah that's when the the doubt creeps in even more uh or you know just go why <laughs> why why have i got to deal with this right now um mental health poor mental health particularly makes having a faith very challenging mm. And what have you found has been useful personally and then from how others have helped you? Well, for me, usually my mental health is anxiety and depression related. So they're the, the common ones that people talk about. And it's important to realise that mental health is not just anxiety and depression and it's not necessarily mental illness. It's all a big spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, 
But for me, along the anxiety, depression lines, when they play up, and obviously that goes really nicely hand in hand with doubt, um, it's trying to center myself, trying to ground myself in the present, really. Um, For me, I find that I can start to overthink things. And when that happens, I'm like, okay, what's happening right now? What am I doing? Okay, I'm doing the washing up, right? Okay, this pot first, then the next, and we'll get to that later. But this pot is what I'm washing right now and start to sort of pull myself back. Another thing I like to do is to get out into nature. That that sort of reaffirms my belief, as it were. I can go out and see the trees and go, okay, that's, that's amazing. They, they're green right now or they've got no leaves and yet next year they're going to have leaves. Isn't that incredible? And sort of try and pull myself back around to it that way. So that's, yeah, there's some ways. There's plenty of information out there. And I, I should stress that if people are looking for ways to, to help their own mental health, you do go out, have a look at some research. It, the things that people recommend might not be, they might not work for you necessarily, but they're worth trying nonetheless to see what fits you. And if you're struggling to find that something is 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 working struggling to to get something working for you then really just just keep trying don't lose heart it's not that it was going to be like this forever it just might not be the right thing for what you need in the same way that medication doesn't work for everyone you know it's it's about finding what works for you and what fits your routine mm. yeah let's talk a bit more about young people and mental health which has been i think like a massive concern over the last couple of years, like seeing the statistics, um, poor mental health in young people is on the rise. Um, self-harming is on the rise. Suicide rates amongst young people globally are on, are on the rise. Um, and I feel like with Route 66, you are, um, you're trying to connect, connect with young people, particularly through your music. And then of course, through mental health. Um, yeah. So what would what would you like to share about that? Yeah, so I I think firstly it's important to know that those statistics are pre-COVID. Yeah. Uh, pretty much all the data we have on mental health right now that hasn't been conducted about 2020 is all pre-COVID. So these these figures are on the rise mm-hmm. without the global pandemic. So mm-hmm. this year has been absolutely disastrous for the mental health scene. You know, it's been really hard for people who didn't necessarily have a history of mental health problems before but young people particularly have had their lives completely turned upside down and disrupted this year particularly those at school college those who are just getting on property ladders those who are just getting into jobs and things or leaving university there's a whole host of young people uh, and that can cover a wide range of ages in terms of what route 66 does i think there's a a great opportunity to reconnect with younger people through music and I think contemporary music is a great way of doing that it's a really useful way of connecting with them and giving them an outlet for this you know for their mental health to feel their emotions and know that actually yeah the the other people in the Christian scene particularly feel that way I think that's something that's been really key is knowing that there are Christians out there who struggle as well and that yeah that plays into the honesty side of things is that letting people know they're not alone uh, letting them know that other people do struggle with this uh, is the biggest the biggest challenge and also the biggest yeah point of Route 66. Mm. Yeah something I've been thinking about is that I think too easily in our in Christian communities like mental health can be seen as a sin and um, we, mm. we just need to like just be really clear mental health challenges are not sinful at all they are com- you know completely normal natural reactions to various life circumstances experiences some are cultural some are conditioned um you know some can be genetic too and yeah there's certainly it's not it's not sinful and experienced by so so many people you know like the statistic i think pre-covid was like one in four people have a mental health challenge of some sort yeah it's it's crazy high and i think 
yeah, there's, there is that barrier of it's sinful and it really isn't. And I think if you even look in the Bible, there are scriptural references to mental health conditions. Uh, we le- I'm thinking particularly of people like Jonah uh, and Elijah, who both had, this is a, this should be a, a little trigger warning here. Um, and that they both had suicidal tendencies. They both experienced awful, awful periods of depression and, and these requests to God to kill them. And I think that it's incredible that that's recorded and that's there as an always testimony for us. Uh, and then we need also look at David and you go, he, the songs he's written in Psalms, a lot of them are seriously sad. They, mm. they clearly come from a depressed mind. So I think if the argument is that it's sinful, it's this, even the most holy of men struggled with their mental health. It's not a sin. It's just part of being a human. It's part of having a physical and mental health and we can't be <laughs> happy all the time like no absolutely not <laughs> or, or joyful I, and uh, I think the sense of how, like having a spiritual joy is not how we perceive joy in like kind of like the way the world perceives it um, yeah there's something so much deeper I think especially this year like lots of people talk to me about experiencing many emotions at the same time and that's fine too like we need to be more comfortable with exercising all our emotions because actually god god has given us all these emotions and even though some of these emotions are very uncomfortable i think going back to the doubt thing we need to be more comfortable with being uncomfortable yeah yeah and i think um particularly when you get strong emotions um in some aspect or another it's really important to to sit with them and if there are ones that you don't understand it's really important to to think about them and actually go, okay, it it may not be at the time when you're going through, if you're particularly angry at one point, you're not going to be able to sit down and go, right, I'm going to sort of meditate on, on why I feel so angry right now. You just want to get it out. And that's um, important to acknowledge. But if you realize that you've had experiences, emotions that you're not used to, that you don't quite understand, or that you know or maybe it's just an intense emotion for a while it's important to sit with them and understand that you're feeling them uh, and try and work out why you're feeling them you might not know you might not have a clue and that's actually okay and that's one of the things that's important to understand if you're feeling really sad and you don't know why it's okay i know it's uncomfortable and it's really unpleasant but your body is feeling that for a reason and you might not know the reason but your body is feeling it and that is happening and that is true and that's when you need to start talking about things with other people and say okay i'm feeling i'm feeling really down i don't i don't know why let's let's just have a chat and yeah that's the sort of the the first steps to talking about things yeah uh, obviously it's really important to stress again that I'm not a mental health professional yeah. I would love to retrain in that aspect one day and actually properly help people but all of my uh, all of my thoughts all of my feelings all of my advice as it were if you if you want to take it as that uh, is purely experiential I've not had training that anything that I'm saying is purely based on my lived experience uh, and so it, it shouldn't be taken as professional advice. But helping young people, again, it, it really comes down to listening and trying to understand. You may be a world away. You may be the parent and, and not really necessarily aware of social media. And the kid is using social media all the time or your young person is using social media all the time. And that's a big thing for mental health is trying to understand where people are and what they're doing trying to understand why they might be feeling things because they're on social media one example is i try i mean especially this year i've tried staying in touch with people via text as well Mm. that's one example checking in with them and seeing how they're doing can be such a helpful thing and some people especially when you're struggling can't cope with a call a telephone call necessarily that can be a situation especially if it's unexpected which can cause more anxiety um but sending someone a text message um and telling them that you're thinking of them and asking them how they are i think can be like incredibly helpful thing and and to try and keep that consistent as well like yeah i think that's a really actually a really important thing is that you should yeah check in with people 
but also don't expect a response. If somebody, if you think somebody might be struggling, um, yeah, don't bug them for, for a better word. You know, don't pe- keep hamming on saying, how are you doing? Are you doing all right? I mean, I need you to sort of be, be doing all right. That's, that's why I'm texting you. I need you to be all right enough to re- reply to me or, or phone me. I need you to phone me to, so I know you're okay. Really, you just need to sort of go in there with that understanding message. And you go, hey, um, I've seen you having a bad time or I'm thinking about you. Yeah, is there anything I can do? Are you okay? Uh, it's fine if you're not sort of thing. You need to, it's it's all about understanding and empathy at the end of the day, even if, yeah, you, you don't necessarily understand. It's about trying to and trying to bring yourself to be, to sit with that person, really sit in with their emotions so that's something you can do to to help other people um and yeah young people works great because they're always on their phone so uh, but some people might not feel like they want to reply and that's also okay you as the as the person trying to reach out you need to accept that and understand that sometimes people don't want to talk or they don't necessarily need to talk actually an important misconception here is that if you have poor mental health it's the end of the world. That's something I've noticed when I talk about my mental health. If I say, okay, guys, I'm, I'm struggling right now. Or I, I write a f- social media post about it. Say, look, I'm taking time off social media because I need to focus on my head. My head's not right. I need just some, some space, some time off. And actually, you get an influx of messages, which is not necessarily the thing you need right then. But they're all saying, oh, I'm here for you if you ever need to talk. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you can always talk. It's like, okay, that's really nice. I'm I'm glad you're there, but I kind of need that response at a different time when I'm not just saying, you know, it's a really bad time. I just need you to check in with me. Mm -hmm. Or also to understand that actually at that moment, you know, the world's not ending. I'm just, I just feel a bit poorly. It's not that I'm suicidal. It's not that I have those thoughts whatsoever. Uh, My, it's, it's not the end of the world. I am just, I'm feeling really poorly in the same way that I might have tonsillitis and I need to spend the day in bed. People aren't going to come. If you say, oh, I've got tonsillitis, people are like, ah, oh, they'll be all right. They'll be all right in a few days, you know. Sometimes, and I stress sometimes, it's like that with mental health and it's purely down to the individual. Uh, and for me, certainly, it might be just a case of, whoa, I need a few days to clear my head to get things back on track. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes it is more severe and you've got the times that need medical attention in which case your best course of action is obviously to to direct people towards getting the help they need and and if it's beyond your realms try and gently guide people towards speaking to their doctor about things um so that's something else that's really important with anybody's mental health Mm. let's talk more about specific challenges as well that young people um had pre-covid and like obviously during this year as well there is incredible sense of isolation Mm. Yeah, COVID has been a really rough one for the young person. As I say, I said earlier, you know, it's turned lives upside down. Worlds have changed. People don't see their family. So isolation has been a real big thing. But actually, without COVID, there are plenty of people in isolation. You've got people who live with chronic illnesses, maybe physical, um, who don't get to see people all that often. And that isolation for them plays on mental health it pulls in anxieties and doubts Uh, i know people who've not left their house for months on end who don't get to see people and that's not even because of covid that's just because they're living in a state that doesn't allow them to either they're they're physically unable to or they're mentally unable to you know it's quite a lot of pressure to walk out your front door when you've not done that for eight months um or 10 years as it is in some cases so isolation is a big big thing and again that text sort of helps to know that people aren't alone on that line if you are going to help someone say you're going to help someone then you've got to follow through that's a really important thing is if you've reached out to someone with a a mental health issue and you say right we're going out on this day uh, or we're going to zoom on this day you've got to follow it through because to someone who's struggling with anxiety or depression you know if you then don't show how how can they ever talk to you about something and know that 
they can trust you again it's really about building trust and that really comes into safe spaces but yeah you've got to follow through in in helping someone out i thought what was interesting about what you were saying about people reaching out like going it's okay i'm here for you like you know there's almost this anxiety and pressure that it's about them and not about you and that the social expectation that we have to be okay all the time yeah that's <laughs> like, yeah that is a big thing for the sake of the other person not for your not for your own mental health it, it's more comfortable if everyone's doing okay mm-hmm. then i don't have to worry about you but actually there's no vulnerability in the relationships there like yeah everything then is pretty lukewarm um lukewarm that's a good word for that trying to get people to understand that yeah you need to go further than just checking in necessarily you need to be prepared to do the work if you've asked the question expect them to come back with a vulnerable response and don't be surprised when they say actually i'm not feeling great i could do with this i could even something as menial as you know what i've got tons of washing to do that i've not done for a month because i've been really struggling Mm -hmm. and the other person might say oh okay that's that's cool i want to go talk to someone else But, you know, what they need to say right there and then is, okay, how can I help? Do you want me to do your washing for you? I can do it with you. Something just just to to help people get back on track. And you'll find that that's more often than not, that it's the little things that really weigh people down. And just doing a little bit to relieve pressure there helps. Mm. Um, And it takes away from that pressure to feel all right. You know, someone's someone's come up to you and said, yeah, I, I need to do my washing. And someone says, yeah, we can we can help. That's not just relieving the pressure of doing the washing. It's relieving the pressure of the next time they come on a Sunday. They know they can talk to you and they know you can they can trust you and that they can just be honest and say, you know what? Oh, it's been a horrible week. Mm. Yeah. And I think like teenage years, going into your 20s, etc. that it's an incredibly social time, a time when you're like gaining independence. And ultimately, young people don't want to be by themselves. And there are times, I think, where even when I've had a bad day and I just think, I don't, I don't want to be by myself. I need to see someone. But sometimes people can't even articulate that. And we've mm-hmm. got to be more um, perceptive when people need company. And yeah. when they are struggling and they just need companionship, they just need someone to hang out with. And even like hang out and sometimes you don't talk. Sometimes you just Absolutely. sit and you sit, can sit in silence. I mean, that's what Job, Job's friends did. But even that is better than someone being like physically isolated and feeling obviously very mentally isolated too. Yeah, I think that a lot of the time people are kind of scared that they're going to say something wrong if someone's asked them to just be with them or, or you know, they're, they're scared of an expectation themselves to help. But, but for the person who's asked for that help, it's been hard to even get to that point to ask for help. Yeah, yeah, we need to dig deeper into getting to know each other. Just definitely, regardless of where we are at in our study or life stage or work. And that we come together and that we're equal yeah um, i think that um study aspect is really interesting as well because that's something that i've noticed a lot particularly in the christelphia community is we are very focused on studying scripture it's all about studying uh and just like in education there are people who you know they flow through they get all the a's and all the and they they're fine but there are also people who who are flagging who don't quite get it and particularly in spiritual life you know that can be really depressing Mm -hmm. it can be really hard for people to be like well i don't get this i don't understand that and now someone's come out and said because i don't understand that i'm not worthy or i i'm not a christian you know that's a a really big thing so we need to relieve the pressure of actually being studious because not everybody is and again it comes down to that being human the uniqueness and understanding that we can't do everything the same way for everyone we need to be able to break things down and do things differently if someone has different needs and that that may be educational it may be mental health it may be 
physical, maybe disability. You know, there are there's lots of things and we need to be a more accessible community. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's all those factors that play into this safe space idea. It's not just when we talk about a safe space, we're not talking about a space that's safe from harm, that's well, well solely safe from harm. It's a place where people can come and they can talk without fear of judgment, with no pressure to be someone they're not, with no pressure to be further along with something than they are. It's a place where people can come and be themselves and be comfortable there. So that might be a Sunday morning because if I'm honest, I don't feel like a Sunday morning is a safe space. Sure, there's no abuse usually. Um, there's no there's no actual harm that goes on there. But sometimes there can be spiritual harm or there can be other kinds of, of harm. So we need to be actively trying to create safe spaces in our ecclesias. And that's what I try to do with Route 66. It's, it's coming from a place of, you know, actually we all have problems and this space should be a place where we can talk about our problems and, and say, you know what, I'm struggling with this in faith or I'm struggling with this in life. And for everyone to be like, OK, we hear you and we might not understand, but we're here to support you and whatever you need, we're going to do what we can. And as an individual, that can be really challenging, trying to sustain other people, which is why it needs to be a sort of a whole community thinking because obviously you as an individual have your own mental health and if yours is poor you should not be expected to be looking after other people and i am the biggest hypocrite for saying this because i will absolutely say someone say, as soon as someone texts me saying oh i'm feeling rough and i'm going oh i feel awful today i my head is not here i'll be like right i need to help this person i am the guiltiest person in the room for trying to help someone else when i'm feeling rubbish but actually it's really important that we ourselves have a safe space that we can rely on as well that we can be open with because we're not going to be 100 percent on our game all the time so we need to look after our own heads before we're helping other people mm. yeah relationships aren't always reciprocal and that's okay as well that you rely on but they don't necessarily rely on you in the same way but that's okay um, because you might be that that friend for someone else this also makes me think very much about Jesus's conversations with people. Those conversations were always really open and honest, and he hmm. helped people be more honest in the in those dialogues, even when they were uncomfortable and didn't want to talk. There were so many people with mental health issues who had dialogues with Jesus. Some who he kind of he he did heal physically, but of course, like there's you know there was a there were bigger spiritual messages in those conversations and he reached out to those that were rejected and on the fringe and on the outside um also we can see with his suffering i think especially the times where he had to leave the disciples and go away by himself that he was also not immune from this you know from a struggle oh yeah totally i think that's something i talk about in uh, one of my videos about mental health is that jesus struggled as well jesus was a man he's still he's got a human brain he's still susceptible to these things he, he was sinless of course but that doesn't doesn't mean he didn't struggle with temptation and with mental health issues you know it's perfectly valid that he was there so he was in the best place to be understanding yeah he has the the most incredible empathetic ability to to really understand other people and help them and so many of those conversations happen in homes you know, he invited, he just the kind of thinking of Zacchaeus. He was like, I'm coming to your house for dinner. I'm not asking you to come to a place to meet me. I'm I'm actually inviting myself to have a relationship mm -hmm. with you and to come into your safe space. And I think that's a, an amazing example to us as well. When people aren't comfortable coming out, we can go to them. Of course, at the moment, it's really challenging to visit people in their own homes, but there are ways to do that even virtually. We're having a conversation mm. right now, like yeah. <laughs> kind of visiting my home and vice versa right at the moment. Um, of course, it's not the same as being in person, but meeting people where they're at, yes. meeting people where they are comfortable so that they can be more open and honest and we can develop better relationships.
and try and develop I think a real sense of empathy because we we're talking before about like social anxiety to be okay all the time and like how everyone else expects us it's a uh, it's kind of a level of sympathy like we feel sorry for people mm -hmm. but we're not really practicing empathy yeah the like, empathy is definitely something deeper yeah it's a really hard skill to get down and I think that's it's something that is changing I think people are being more empathetic but it all comes from understanding your own emotions I think uh, and particularly I think it's something that needs to be focused on as kids we need to be talking with our children about mental health we need to be talking with our children about our own emotions and understanding what they are and really and I'm thinking particularly about boys I know I grew up with the stereotype of men don't cry you know boys don't cry you know boys really do cry and it's important to understand not just as the adult but as the child going why am I crying am I sad am I angry am I frustrated am I happy you know it's important to understand why we're why we're feeling these emotions because once you can understand your emotions and why you're feeling something you know, it only is, it's one more step to understanding what someone else is feeling and going through and whether they have a mental health condition or not or poor mental health at that time you know it's no different it's the same thing we're feeling the same things just varying intensities yeah i completely agree with you my my seven-year-old son um cries a lot actually i think i mean he's been doing virtual school and he's had a lot of anxiety about like being on the screen all the time and like it's live and in front of all his friends and like that pressure is very different than like kind of being in person and yeah lots of times where he comes running into my office and he's he's really sad and he's struggling and we don't just want to stop people crying as you're saying it's okay to cry it's okay to feel all these emotions and we need to exercise and explore them and be more comfortable with difficult emotions being able to talk about them being able to model them ourselves I, I I see that in myself as a mother too in that I need to be honest with my children when I'm not feeling great and I'm not having a good day of course you don't have to share everything and it does depend on their age but by just by pretending that everything's okay they pick up on that so much more I mean their children are super perceptive and in a way we can crush that perception we don't want to squash that perceptiveness because actually it's a real God-given gift of being perceptive and it's something that we need to keep alive because that's going to help us grow with each other and understand more about, about who God is because yeah. we are made in his image. Totally, totally. I think if we can raise a generation to be more empathetic, then we're laying some good foundations. We really are. How can we as churches and ecclesias be more educated about mental health? That is a great question. And that's the kind of proactive approach we need. Really, after listening, to be better listeners, the, the second thing is to, to actually get people who know what they're talking about to come in and to maybe run workshops. There's so much we can learn from other people around. And we are a small community, so we sort of have a responsibility as churches to to look after our members uh, to actually provide real and plausible opportunities for people so by running events where we present basic mental health safeguarding or training is 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 necessary not just for other people but also for ourselves too because yeah it's it's important that the church actively tries to to help and by getting those people in who know what they're talking about you know you're showing that you've got this responsibility you're showing that you care and and also you're you're saying that actually you know we're, we're on the way to becoming a safe space you know we've got these things in place and we we hear you we know that this is going on so this is something we're doing about it yeah that kind of makes me think that when we are supporting people and even if we have a good relationship with them or vice versa sometimes we can really feel out of our depth um in supporting people and we shouldn't feel alone in that support when we Absolutely. are helping someone and that we need to reach out to professionals we need to reach out to other people when we need more support to support someone else who is really struggling absolutely and 
you know if you if you're not sure who to reach out to or if you want to learn more about mental health my gut instinct is to you know read up on it listen to people and be open-minded listen to people who know what they're talking about to people who have been through it but don't expect people with poor mental health to be your source of knowledge they might not be strong enough to help you right now so don't put any extra pressure on them as to what their life is already putting on them go and do some research there's plenty of great resources out there and try and be a tool for good yeah completely agree and i think sometimes when someone's confiding in us if you're seriously concerned about that person especially if you think they are self-harming or could be suicidal i think it's really good to find out about what other support network they have around them because I, I it can be very collaborative as well you can create a support network around that person even when that person can't really articulate and um, to kind of see signs as well of, of when you do need to increase that level of support if someone is in danger yeah absolutely and we can put some helpful numbers and, and websites in in these descriptions and stuff so if you are struggling at the moment um, please don't be scared to reach out to someone, whether it's a friend or family member, anyone you know, um, and, and to try and talk about what you're concerned about. And also there's a ton of like professional helplines as well. But we want to reassure you that your feelings are valid and that you are loved deeply by God and by many people in your community and those around you. And you are never alone, even though it can really feel like you're isolated and on your own, especially in this really tough year. We want to reassure you that you are not alone. Please and please reach out to myself or Michael if you have any questions or comments and want to chat. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely not alone. And you can always message Route 66 Movement either on Facebook or Instagram and you can have a chat with me and it can be completely anonymous. It's fine. You don't need to don't need to reveal anything. But yeah, you can. We'll just have a chat and see how things are. Absolutely no judgment here either. You know, you can say anything, whatever's bothering you, you can always chat. What are your plans for Route 66 to see Route 66 develop? Yeah, what I'd really like to see is, well, the main major thing is we've been working on a fundraising campaign over the last month. I've been writing 24 songs to raise money for Tear Fund, and that's going to be transformed into an EP. Well four EPs, so we're going to be releasing music, proper produced, nice sounding music in the next year, and we'd really just like to keep building on this community, keep talking about mental health, helping people out where they, where we can, and just have people listening to the music and, and sharing that in that. Uh, uh, there's nothing that makes me more happy than someone saying, oh, I listened to your music and, and uh, I got this from it. It's like, oh, totally awesome. I didn't, I didn't, write that in necessarily but you've got something new from it and that's really cool so i just like to be able to touch uh, more people's hearts this year yeah i think sharing music is great even like through your phone so you're listening if you listen to some music that really resonates with you share it with someone you know who might appreciate it too and you can just share a track and tell someone you're thinking about them and you don't really need to say um much else because the lyrics and the music like do the speaking Absolutely. That's what's so great about music. I love it. 